Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And this is going to be our third video on the utter state of the comic book industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gets better and better. It gets better and better. We got uh, two stories we're going to talk about in this video. The first is Marvel editor in chief CB Sobolski telling freelancers to not quit their day jobs. Now this is after we're hearing on the back end that it's Marvel as, as one of the main ones that aren't paying their people. Yeah, so. You can't confirm that though. No, I have heard through the grapevine that it's not just smaller publishers like Aftershock and Valiant, but actually Marvel Comics that is deferring payment. And now we've got C.B. Sobolski at a Comic-Con in Singapore, which is very ironic given that he was uh, kind of canceled for using an Asian pen name. He's yes, a, I thought that was funny too. Uh, yeah, and uh, so he's over in Singapore, but he basically is telling people not to quit their day jobs if they want to work in comics. Which we've been telling you the same thing. We've been telling, but to hear that from Mar like Marvel, Marvel and DC were the two companies you could rely on if you broke in that you would actually and make a And this is when people are complaining they're not getting paid. Yes. And Marvel might be one of them. Yes. You know, that's the first story. Uh, first story, second story is Action Lab. This is just kind of a footnote, a follow-up to the uh, situation with uh, Action Lab, uh, which is a, a uh, independent comic book publisher that was getting blasted for not paying people last year. And now they're uh, in some sort of a legal situation with the creator of Princeless. Uh, apparently they were gonna move forward with some new Princeless content in a free comic book day uh, comic, but the creator's like, that's crap, but they're like, we own it. I don't know the story, but by the picture, scroll down. Are these two a couple or something? And my next comment. I'm sure and they my are. Next comment is, how was that better? It's the same thing. It's just that they want they're both women. But it's the same thing that you have a problem with this problematic. They insert, you know inserting relationships and all romance in there. But it's the same thing. It's the same damn thing. Let's <laughs> let's talk about the same damn thing, which is uh, most people working in comics are broke. Unfortunately, that is the reality of it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, over uh, 282, almost 283. We're like 100 Yay! away. 283,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Uh, we actually crowdfunded Crimson Wren Volume 1 on uh, Indiegogo and Kickstarter. And they needed to close this out. They, they put a ticket in. They haven't closed it out yet. But it's so you can squeak in there if you're hurry. Yeah, you can squeak in. Uh, it's already shut down on Kickstarter, but between the two, we did like $110,000, $112,000. Right. Uh, we own it. We retain the rights to it. Uh, we basically, now it sounds like a lot of money, but we basically made enough to pay back the investment in the production costs. And then the next book. Yeah, print the book and bankroll the next book. That's, that's basically, that's, that pretty much brings us almost even. <laughs> so, pretty yeah. much almost even. So comics is expensive. Now, to be fair, this is not a 32-page comic. This is a 140-page hardcover graphic novel. So the production costs are significantly higher. Full color. Full color. Yeah, so it's it's not a cheap book to produce, but uh, thanks to all of you, uh, we were able to to produce it and not yeah, have to you. not have to deal with these other companies. So this is coming from the Hollywood Reporter. I missed it. Uh, Singapore Comic Con Marvel Comics chief talks Asian business advice for creators. Again, remember C.B. Sobolski. Now I think it was a, a non-issue personally, but uh, he did cut his teeth in comics, working as like Marvel's I don't know Asian liaison or whatever, and he wrote comics under an Asian pen name because his understanding was that uh, they didn't like Westerners over there very much. So he used a pen name to pass himself off as possibly maybe an Asian author. Now, this is actually pretty common in manga. A lot of people use pen names, mm -hmm. but there were some uh, Western comic book people that tried to get him canceled, said it was cultural appropriation and all that jazz. Um, but he's still there. And he's still doing Asian comic cons. And now he's telling people not to quit their day jobs if they want to work for Marvel. Well, in comics in general, which we have told the people the same thing. Yes, we've been telling people this. Even if you're working for Marvel in DC, you might just get a gig here and there doing a cover, doing a backup story. But it's pretty telling. You know, when he's he's telling people, he said, uh, this, is, this is what he said. He said, I think we'll be seeing more up and coming artists from Asia uh, looking to focus on interior art and sequential storytelling. Now, he's in Singapore. Now, I'm not sure. I know the cost of living over there is pretty high, but I do know that uh, Marvel and DC have been looking outside of the U.S. for more and more talent. It could be economic because it's cheaper to hire people in other countries, 
Or it could be that these people aren't on Twitter all the time. Or it could just be that they find that they, they're they more find the most appealing, talented people. And they're more appealing, yeah, and they're more, they're, that's more appealing to, to possible consumers. That is true. He said that he sees uh, creative shifts in the region in the future. He also anticipates art styles moving away from video game and anime inspired forms toward more hand drawn, personal, and culturally influenced oh, line work, here we go. which is less reliant on computer rendering. Meanwhile, they're trying to do AI that will generate comic books on their own. Yeah, right. So here's, here's where it gets really interesting. You get out of comics what you put in, so never lose your passion. But remember, when you choose to work in comics, the job does not stop once you finish a script or draw a page. The hustle needs to continue with writers and artists also serving as their own cheerleaders, PR people, social media managers, accountants, and more. Oh, my God. Don't, don't quit your day job until you are financially sound Which as I a freelancer. Agree with. Just because you get your first assignment and paycheck does not mean you have a career in comics just yet. I agree with him. But I think it's funny. He's like, you know, it doesn't stop once you do this. You have to go do all the PR for your stuff. You have to go do your own accountant. And you got to be your own everything. Because you, if you're not out there promoting yourself, who's going to promote you? Because it sure as hell isn't us. But um, don't quit your day job because you got you know, you need to be financially stable. It's something we have told people repeatedly if you watch this channel. This is this is actually common sense. And I, I've seen people who were a huge deal in comics 20, 30 years ago. Their careers had an ebb and flow. Uh, very seldom do you have people stay in it long term, or if they do, they either change up their style or they change their position. They go from like, oh, I was a super, superstar artist to now I'm a publisher, like, like, you know, like Todd McFarlane. Um, and he's more of a, I would say, more of a businessman now than he is an artist. He hires other people to work for him. But usually people have kind of an ebb and flow or you you know, get one of your ideas picked up for a movie, then you see like a renaissance in your career. That has happened before. Uh, but very seldom do you like get a gig at 20 working for Marvel Comics, drawing Incredible Hulk or something, and you're still doing that same damn thing 30 years later. Mm -hmm. it, it does not happen. They change up creative teams all the time. You're not making money like you used to either. No, the page I mean, rates haven't gone up. Right. Like it used to be you were like a superstar artist or writer. You can make all kinds of money. Not the case now. I just think it's really interesting that... Uh, I you think know, it's ironic. The the timing. The timing of this. Don't we're not paying... People aren't getting paid in comics. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> Don't quit your day job, guys. So let's let's talk about this. We've, we've talked about the Action Lab. Now, they are here in Pittsburgh. I believe they've been in some... Uh, legal trouble apparently not well this this is one of the first indie publishers that came out that they weren't paying their creators they went radio yes, we, silent we've, we've covered it before you can find those videos there are look. multiple videos about action lab and now there is a kerfuffle with one of their highest profile creators because they're moving ahead with uh, i guess putting this princeless book out as a free comic book day promo uh and the creator's not real real happy so earlier this week uh, this is coming from bleeding cool uh, Jeremy Whitley and Emily Martin had issues with Action Lab soliciting a new Princeless comic book for next year's free comic book day, featuring an unpublished comic despite impending litigation. We initially reached out to Brian Seaton, publisher of Action Lab, uh, Pabut, Pabut <laughs> didn't hear anything back. That's changed. Today, Brian has issued with the following statement. Uh, Action Lab will not directly address the false misleading statements that Jeremy and Emily make here. Your readers should know that Jeremy and Emily signed a contract that gave Action Lab control over and ownership of the Princeless finished product. Now well, he that, said finished product, and he said unpublished comics. Yeah, well, I think I think just Princeless in general. I think it's they own it, which surprises me. I I always thought Princeless was creator owned. Creator owned. Yeah, and I, it's I thought they were the publisher. Well, I'm glad that they that they they turned down Pratt Pratt for oh Pratt Shadow Pratt. Avengers. Yes, yeah. they did. We actually approached them years ago. Uh, we talked about maybe rebooting Shadowbinders again, you know, Crimson Rim, which is a prequel. You know, over $100,000 between Kickstarter and Indiegogo, but they turned it down. They didn't think it would and sell. And they didn't even bother dressing it to the right person. Right? No. They used our last name twice. Yes. Thanks, Pratt Pratt. Yeah, thanks for your submission, Pratt Pratt. But, uh, you know, we're not interested. We didn't, didn't think it was going to sell. We didn't think there was a market for it. You know, unlike Princeless, unlike Princeless, you got to give that away. Um, so we dodged a bullet there. Anyway, uh, Jeremy and Emily gave these rights to Action Lab subject only to a limited right of approval during the creative process, receipt of royalties and an opportunity to work on the books on a work for hire basis. So they basically I, I guess they sold it. This uh, is why it. you always have a lawyer go over the contract. Well, the problem is, is because most comic book artists are broke ass 
a lot of them can't afford the lawyers. So they basically can't afford, and there are people who specialize in comics and games and they're like geek media, but they're very good at what they do and they're not inexpensive. So, you know, it's kind of a catch 22. It's like to get to the place where you can actually afford the lawyer to fight your battles for you, you have to be somewhat successful you know, but, but you, I mean, you might not get there if you make dumb decisions along the way. Right. You need to have, even if you, you know, you find the money or you have, you know, somebody else go over this contract because they apparently agreed to these things. I mean, we always, I haven't seen the contract. So there's sort of seen the contract. I can't see exactly what was agreed to on either side. Yeah. But, you know, there's clearly a dispute here. Yeah. So they said that uh, because of the arrangement, Action Lab has chosen to grow the audience of the many volumes of Princess, which has been around for a while, and the spinoff series Raven the Pirate Princess. By distributing as our offering in the largest comic book promotion of the year, Free Comic Book Day, we informed Jeremy and Emily of our plan in October. Uh, the contract uh, is one that's an issue. Previously reported, there's a class action lawsuit from a number of creators, which we covered. talked about. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is the initial complaint. Um, they said that because of this class action lawsuit, they really don't want the work out there. Um, so this is what they said. Has come to our attention through the excitement of our fans. There's a brand new Princeless book being offered by Action Lab Comics for Free Comic Book Day. Uh, that's a surprise. <laughs> to say that's a surprise is perhaps an understatement. The creators of Princeless are currently in a protracted legal battle with Action Lab regarding a number of issues we feel should have been voided or should have void our publishing contract with Action Lab. Is this because they weren't paying people? Yes. And, and the thing is, if they weren't paying people, it could have voided. It, it, it might, you know. Yeah, that, that's yeah, true. Yeah, seeing the contracts, we can't say. Right. And the thing with contract is a lot of times there are like contingencies. It's like, okay, well, you're owed this so long as this other thing is fulfilled and you can actually nullify a contract. If somebody was supposed to, you know, say, pay you royalties and they didn't do it uh, and they were supposed to, you know, give you an accounting of, you know, books well, sold or whatever. Say. As detailed in the original complaint, these issues range from non-payment of royalties, late payment of artists, late delivery of books to the distributor, and actually I completely shutting down business and payments for a large chunk of 2020 without informing us or other creators. Perhaps even more worrying is Action Lab's claim in their previous solicitation. This is meant to kick off the 10th volume. Not only was this done without our approval, but the team has only finished the first issue of the volume and the implication that the rest of the volume is coming soon is misleading to retailers, consumers, and the distributor. Well, that's okay. We'll just solicit it, take the money for it, and then, you know. That's your problem. You're, they're the ones that That's your problem if we never deliver it, right? The only possible explanations are that uh, Action Lab is trying to force the creative team into feeling pressured by the expectation of fans or that Action Lab meant to contain the book without us. I think it's the latter. They basically said, we have a right now, that's a shitty way to find out that. Yeah, it's a shitty thing to do all the way around. So I'm thinking, you know, again, I don't know the specifics. I'm thinking that they sold Prince because I was under the impression Princeless was creator-owned. And I think they might have sold the rights in exchange for, like, higher royalties or something, which does happen sometimes. You can actually or buy like, Or they get paid per, like, they get, right. they get paycheck for it. Uh, well, here we go. Talking about broke-ass artists. Princeless was never a cash cow. I thought Princeless was, like, the most hottest indie comic out there that yeah. everybody was reading according and to if the you didn't, beat. you're a bigot if you didn't you're a bigot uh that's never what it was about it was about creating an important comic with a message that we could be proud of and the stories we wanted young comic fans to read oh okay uh, <laughs> it's important to create the book under ethical work practices where freelancers can expect the pay they're promised in a timely and uncomplicated fashion uh, until this legal issue is settled we would ask the princess fans not support it don't 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 buy the free comic on <laughs> Free Comic Book Day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, how you have to say it's a free book. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are going to go in to take whatever free books are there and they're not going to know anything about this. They, they don't. That's the, that's the thing, too. And, uh, you know, I mean, I look, I, I don't even know what to tell people anymore. I would say at this point, like, make sure that if you're, especially with independent publishers, and that would include us, too, Make sure that you're working with people that you know are going to pay you on time, that your contracts are legit, especially if there's like a royalty arrangement or something like that. Make sure you know who owns what and uh, if they're, you know, what their obligations are. Because uh, part of the problem with Action Lab is apparently they were like holding books for months, which violated contracts. And the one guy got, I forget who it was exactly, but he had a, a zombie book, I remember, and he got the rights reverted back to him because they defaulted on their end. They didn't publish the mm -hmm. book, as I understand it when they're supposed to. But again, this just comes down to 
So many would-be comic book creators being so desperate to break into the industry that they make bad deals. And the reality is, is a lot of you would be better off just going out and doing it yourself. You know? But then, but then that's hard. Because it you is have hard. To it's do not easy. What C.B. Sabalski said, be your own PR person and get an audience and do all the things that you know you need to do to sell books. Yeah, and that is that becomes a full-time job. I mean, at this point, I'm more of a, a pencil pusher and a bean counter than an artist, and I, I know that. But uh, you know that we we get our stuff out the door though too. You know, so I mean, if it was just me, you know, sitting in a chair all the time drawing, that's great. You, you draw all the time, but is anybody buying your books? Is right. anybody seeing your stuff? So, and sadly, the reality is, if you want to get stuff out there, you usually have to team up with somebody. But mm -hmm. you have to have the contracts checked. And again, short of seeing the contract, which we don't have in front of us, I can't say one way or another who's right or wrong, but it is an interesting situation. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up. I think we're going to see a lot more stories like this, especially going into 2023 with recession, especially with the, the word that uh, a lot of these smaller publishers were bankrolled by PPP loans, and that money has is, is long since run out, especially with a lot of comic shops folding. We're gonna see a lot of stories like this and I'm, I'm sorry, I am, I really am. But uh, there are other ways to make comics than going through this system. Yeah, I agree. So we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.